So hi, I'm Kat Khan and I'm here with Tom Kaczynski yep. uh, from the Artist Alley at the ALA Annual Conference in Anaheim, California this June of 2012. And I have a, just a few questions for you, Tom. Um, uh, first, how did you get into doing comics? Uh, well, I've been drawing comics for a long, long time. I'm originally from Poland and I started reading comics at a very young age. And um, just it just clicked. It just clicked, and uh, started drawing them, and never stopped. You know, I think my first comic book was made, and I was like eight years old. I actually like created the whole thing, folded it, stapled it, drew a log logo on mm. there, and priced it. And uh, yeah, that was my first comic, and I kind of just kept going. Okay, great. Uh, can you tell me about uh, your current project that you have, that you're working on? Sure, there's actually a couple of them. One of them I have here, which is Trans Terra, which is a collection of um, mini comics that I've uh, been working on since 2005. And it's, uh, it's uh, kind of an autobiographical comic uh, about uh, part of it. It's sort of the springboard is um, my move from Poland to the United States in the late 80s before the fall of communism. And I use it as a kind of uh, as a launching pad to talk about all kinds of ideas, about nostalgia, utopia, dystopia, the apocalypse, and uh, the possibility of like a better future. You know, right now, I feel like our culture is in a very uh, nightmarish, apocalyptic mode. So lots of movies about the end of the world, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm kind of trying to find a little bit of an antidote to that. And uh, my other project is I don't have it here with me, but it's a book coming out from Fanographics. Um, and it's called Beta Testing the Apocalypse. So it deals with a lot of similar themes, but yeah. it's all fiction. And um, it's a collection of my comics, short, short uh, stories from uh, from uh, Mold, which is an anthology that the Fanagon has published. And that's coming out in October. And this Trans Terra coming out in February from Uncivilized Books. Okay. Now, um, how have you found libraries um, supportive of you? Have, have they been getting any of your works in? Well, um, a lot of my books haven't been published in, in like a book form. Like I've mm -hmm. been working on comics for a long time, but there's been a lot of sort of pamphlets and um, or, or pieces and anthologies in other places. So um, as a, you know, not very many libraries have my work like as a complete book. So it's really difficult to say right now. Mm -hmm. Um, I do find that uh, sometimes I wish some comics would occasionally be, be uh, filed by subject matter rather than by the fact that they're comics because I think there's a lot of comics uh, that, that talk about interesting issues, um, you know, their memoirs, their historical mm -hmm. uh, pieces, um, and they would be enjoyed by people who aren't necessarily looking for comics but are looking for that subject. So um, that's one thing that I would love to see in libraries more of. Know, less, okay. less like lumping us together yeah. um, and spreading us out a little bit more by, by the subject. So. Okay. Um, is there an, another comic by anyone else other than you uh -huh. uh, that you would recommend for any age reader that you choose? Sure, sure. Um, well, the comic I'm really I love the most right now is. Um, also by Uncivilized Books, and it's a uh, Gabrielle Bell's The Voyeurs, which uh, it's, a, it's a great memoir. It's, it's, it's a very sort of literary comic, um, short pieces, uh, and uh, you know, she, I think she's one of the best uh, female cartoonists of our generation, um, and up and coming amazing cartoonists. So uh, I, I highly recommend her work to anyone. You know, I think it's a Excuse a little bit older, but um, mm -hmm. but it's, it's really great work. So. Okay, great. And um, is there one piece of advice that you would give to someone who came up to you and said, you know, I think I would like to try to create comics? Sure, sure. Um, yeah, no, there's there's lots of pieces of advice, but uh, one is just to do them. You know, just mm -hmm. go ahead and start doing them and uh, putting them out as like mini comics, small short run things um, so you can see it printed so you can see it on a page because um, uh, that's that's when you kind of learn like mm -hmm. you know, the proportions of things how things look on a page how uh, and just how easy it is sometimes to just do it and uh, and not worry about it too much mm -hmm. and the small the small editions are also great because you, 
you don't have to invest a lot of money and effort to like self publishing a book or something. Um, and then they serve as great portfolio pieces so you can show it to publishers and show it to other people that uh, you know you can show that you can actually uh, you know you're, you're able to put together a comic and, and it's something that uh, people will be interested in buying. So it's a it's a great way to like start out. Um, and there's a whole community of artists that do this kind of work. It's a very supportive community, so it's a great place to get get a start and get a lot of feedback mm -hmm. and um, and eventually. Uh, get published and, you know, and get, uh, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, my last question you actually kind of answered sure. um, previously because it, for most people it's been kind of a tough question, what would you like libraries to do for comics that yeah, yeah. You, they aren't already doing? And you, you talked about how you want to see comics more into the various subject areas rather than kind of ghettoized in a sure. graphic novel section. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you have any other uh, thoughts about what libraries could do? Because I think we could probably do some more, but we need we need ideas from people other than librarians. Sure, sure. I mean, I think that's, that's kind of like a big first step, you know? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it, you know, one, one of the things that um, that's sort of coming out from the digital world is, you know, there's there's this sort of concept of tagging things, you know, there's um, a lot of books can fall into multiple categories and that's kind of a, mm -hmm. you know, it's something, I'm not really sure how the Dewey system handles that exactly, <laughs> um, but, you know, there, you know, there are categories and there are books that, you know, there's graphic novels that fit with history, there's graphic novels that fit with memoir, and there's, so it's like, you know, I wonder if there's a way to sort of tag things in a way that, um, you know, multiple readers can discover these works because uh, they don't always, you know, fit in just one, one section. So, you know, I don't know, I don't know how that would work necessarily, but it's a, you know, it's an idea that kind of mm -hmm. comes out of the, a little bit out of the digital world and you can kind of tag things in multiple ways. So, um, you know, I, I don't, you know, I'd yeah. love to talk to some librarians yeah. about that, so.